occasion when we are inviting our ambassador, uh, Yu Zhao Young, if I pronounce it correctly. Thank you. Very. Uh, you are <coughs> recently appointed ambassador here to this country. Uh, you follow in a long line of very influential Chinese ambassadors who have left a very big impression on the people in this country. Thank you. The relationship between Ireland and China is one that we in Ireland consider to be of considerable importance. The rise of China <clears throat> over the last 20, 25 years into the 21st century is something that we have observed uh, with admiration and with awe to become the, soon to become the world's largest economic power. When one considers where China started from in the 1950s is an extraordinary journey uh, that uh, we look at and consider with a, a lot of um, admiration. You. you are most welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, you have uh, many people who are with you in the embassy here. And on behalf of the Institute for International and European Affairs, I'd like to ask you to address us. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Mr. Rory Queen. Mr. Ken Kandagan. Distinguished friends and guests, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I, I really would like to thank uh, Chairman Mr. Queen again for his kind words. So sometimes we use, uh, uh, as, as my uh, credential uh, by, our, by my president to your, uh, His Excellency President, Mr. Higgins said, I'm the ambassador, plenitentiary, and extraordinary. So sometimes I take the liberty to say, on behalf of Chinese government and the Chinese people. I would like to thank you, Chairman and uh, Mr. Rory and Queen and this institute, IIEA, to give me this uh, uh, very, very uh, good opportunity to do the, this presentation. This is also my first official presentation in this uh, uh, wonderful and uh, highly uh, respected institute. So today, my, uh, the title or the theme of my address, as indicated here, is this is my homework. This is what you have given me, China's current and future economic development. And I follow these guidelines, and I give my uh, address a title Chinese transformation and rejuvenation, and it put China's economic development and reform and opening up in a larger, a little bit larger contest. And the key word of my presentation, as well as the goals of China's development, as our president, uh, Xi Jinping, called it in the first year of he assumed his office as president of China, said it's China's dream. A dream from which the Chinese people have been striving for over a century. It is also an ongoing grand cause that we refer to as China's modernization drive. Or simply put, the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. As you all know, China's reform, as you see it, China's reform and opening up uh, comes not in one day. It is a long process. Since, nine, since I think since as early as 1840, uh, just about the time when this country had the farming, and we had something worse. Uh, 19, 1841, it is the, first, the year of the first, what we call, opium war with UK. China, since then, of course, we had a lot of humiliated, bad, bad uh, uh, a defeat. <clears throat> and China, from that time on, we found our sovereignty, integrity of the land, and our rights gradually eroded and eroded, and China 
come down for a, what we call a semi-colonial, semi-feudal state. So since then, the old feudal monarchy in China had collapsed. That is from, they struggled from 1840 until 1911. Uh, when we had what we call the 1911 revolution led and uh, lead, led by Dr. Sun Yat-sen. The old monarchy ca collapsed and the country is now set up. And the whole land was trapped in the turmoil and the chaos by what we called is, is the time of the <clears throat> warfare among the warlords. Compounding the situation were the foreign invasions and the attempt to divide and swallow the land one after another. And it is until the Japan want to by himself to occupy and suppress the whole land, <clears throat> which also shocked the whole world. And that was the time of the Second World War, what we called the War of Resistance against Japan, <coughs> military invasion. People during all those from 1840 to up until 1949, 100 years, 109 years, people lived in extreme poverty, starvation, and oppression, suffering repeated and increasing outside depression, exploitation, and bullying, and whatever hardships you can imagine. The Chinese were known as sick men of the East, Asia. The country and the civilization as a whole are on the verge of perishing. A song got very popular among all the Chinese people in the deepest the dire situation during the Second World War. Later on, that, that song become what we have until now, and I think in future, our national anthem. One of the lines of the song goes, the Chinese nation faces its greatest peril. After generations' persistent efforts, the People's Republic of China, as we know now, was at long last established in 1st October 1949. For the first time in over 109 years, we earned the historical opportunity to reconstruct our nation, our country, and to pre pres preserve and develop our culture and civilization. The devastated old China had already gone forever, and a nation that has more than 5,000 years of history of civilization realized it's what we call Nirvana. The Chinese people were so proud and happy that they affectionately call the newly born People's Republic China as New China. So uh, as we talk about China, it's a one China policy, a lot of China, but actually it is one China, and we call it Republic of, Repu People's Republic of China as New China. Because before the New China was founded, it is the, it's the civil, war, civil war between KMT's forces and the CCP's forces, Chinese Communist Party's forces. And what we called KMT's way of planning to build China there are, there, are some, there are some good people in it. And we call it old China. They want to build China in old way, we said. And later on, we called our People's Republic of China as new China. <clears throat> now, we, we, from that time on, we are determined to build our country into a self-reliant, independent, democratic, free, strong, and prosperous nation. And we call the whole process, now as we have the 
Chinese government at, current, at present, the, we call it the road of socialism with Chinese characteristics, or the great rejuvenation of an old civilization. Looking back, among, among all these years, we have, we have experienced the different, uh, different governments, different uh, way of the approach, how to, how to modernize China, how to get rid of the poverty, how to really find a way. We learned from Soviet Union, we learned from the Europe, we learned from Northern America, we learned from everybody. And we found when we, wherever we, we never from whoever body, whoever, and wherever we learn from, we really have to stick to China's situation. So it is always the balance of opening up and to apply what we have learned outside to the China's situation. This is what we all, all we, we come all along now uh, up to the current uh, situation. Really, we, recording all this, we are proudly say, we, we, now we are happy and proudly say that Chinese people have really made tremendous achievements, and we have earned our recognition by the peoples in the world. Now let me say a few words about China's reform and opening up. Our, what we called, I try, when I, when I do this presentation, sometimes you, you find I use some English phrases. And actually I'm using the chi English translation of what our public policy indicates. So as you hear this kind of expression more, when you uh, uh, converse with your Chinese friends, you may get your mind and, and ears more familiar with those expressions. Because this is so different to two cultures, European cultures and Chinese cultures. And in future, we can have more exchanges of this so that here you are all the opinion leaders and the public pol political diplomatic leaders. We together, we have, I, I, I believe, we have the responsibility and opportunity to help our two peoples to bridge over. So sometimes, later on, I, uh, I will welcome you to ask further questions as to whatever I use here, the terms, expressions, and phrases too. China's opening and what we call Opening up and reform started in earnest in 1978. Deng Xiaoping, Mr. Deng, we said, architect of China's opening and reform, assumed his position as what the foreign media called paramount leader of China, quote, in 1970 about 1976 or 1970, 1977. So all these three years, China was thinking how we would, would proceed. We are going to go old way or we are going to have a new page. And in 1978, the Central Committee of China made a huge and a very important decision that we want to do this comprehensive whole scale reform and open up. We cannot do it old way like we did in the Cultural Revolution. In the Cultural Revolution. <clears throat> so from 1978 till now, it is about 39 years. And next year is 40 years. All these 40 years, our over, overarching guiding principle for this, for our, for our for our efforts is to join hands actually from all our friends and partners in the world and open China's door to build a community of what now our President Xi Jinping called it, build a community of shared future for human beings together. I think that means we want to build China to have our China rebuilt and reconstructed and to realize China's modernization by always open China's door to the outside world. In so doing, 
We have been emphasizing peaceful development, win-win cooperation, and common prosperity. This is all the more obvious since 1978. Our reform and opening up has really achieved uh, more than we higher and quicker and uh, greater than even Chinese people expected. Uh, in the beginning, uh, Mr. Deng said, let's on the, on the 1970, uh, on the 1980s level, let's every 10 years, we should double China's GDP. So by 1980, 1990, China should double. By 20, 1990, 2000, we should double again. So every, he hope every 10 years, we should double our uh, GDP national production. If you, if you learn, uh, I, I, I think you know, if you keep 7% uh, GDP growth, normally you get eight years to get doubled. If you get 8% GDP growth annually, you get seven years, you get it doubled. So in his mind, we, we need to at least keep a six to 8% growth every year to reach at least every 10 years to get our GDP doubled. By opening, by, by reform, by all the measures we can think of. So actually, you all know what we have achieved. From that time on, we always, in the first 25 years, we achieved 13 to 15 annual growth, percentage annual growth. And the later part of this 30 to 40 years, we achieved 9% annual growth. So we found ourselves always reach our goal ahead of time. So central committee have to, the government have to re, re planning and redeveloping our development, development plans. I give you some examples on, on what we have uh, achieved. In the, lighting, in the 1980s, five, we, pu we put it in a very face-in and step-by-step -step way. We know China is so huge. You cannot apply one policy to the whole country. So we, we get a lot of what are called pilot schemes or the uh, on trial base and gave the uh, autonomous rights to the local governors to say, you, you, you think you, we give me the free hand, you can try whatever you, you, you want. So in the 1980s, in the, in the early 1980s, five special economic zones were established. Shenzhen, Zhuhai, Shantou, in Guangdong province, Xiamen province, and the entire Hainan province. This is on the southern coastlines. So Ambassador, uh, O'Leary, if you, you went there you, in China, you go to that places, those people feel they are the forefathers of China's uh, reform. They, uh, they take a lot of bold measures in the early on when many Chinese still think of the old approach to improve their lives. In 1980, we decided to open 14 more cities which were designated, designated as open coast cities covering China's 18,000 square kilometers coast areas, in coast areas. One of these cities is always by millions, by five million to 10 million Chinese people. So after this, almost uh, 300, 300 million Chinese people are in the opening policy and reform policy. After 1985, seven bigger regions, including, just now some people asked me, Yangtze River Delta and Pearl River Delta were designated as economic develop development zones. Those zones together with the 14 coastal cities constituted what we called a coastal economic belt. Actually, even now, this area occupied 60 to 70 percent of China's trade, economic, and investment of the whole nation. 
In 1990, the Yangtze River open belt that is all the way from Shanghai, 2,000 miles, 2,000 miles all the way back to our west, Qinghai province, just next door to Tibet. Those zones together uh, was established in the Pudong New Area in Shanghai. The east of, east of Shanghai, Shanghai the whole population is about 18 million to 20 million people. So they carved the, the this city is located in Arpang Huangpu River. So the old Shanghai is in the left side of the river. There's no place to development for the further development. It's, it is inner city problem. So they completely moved to the new area to the right side of the river, right bank of the river. We call it east side of the river. Now, this area is the most, is the vanguard, still the vanguard and the most advanced region in China's further reform and deeper reform. Now we get uh, Premier Li Keqiang. Uh, now he's, he has his, what we call uh, new special experimental uh, development zone uh, designated in Shanghai, in Shanghai to try, actually people say China want to, in that area, want to try all they have known in the TPP and the TIPP and the TI or by BIA or BIE, the, all those on the, in, in the negotiation. But, uh, to, to put the example is, we want to try everything we think is already fit into China's situation and we want to accumulate it, uh, experience in advance when it is applied, it is going to be applied to the whole country or maybe to the whole region or to the, some other countries are murmuring, they are trying uh, new ways to have further free trade and investment and a way to improve our global economy. As we see how to uh, go with the, both the opportunities and the challenges of globalization. <clears throat> this is my personal understanding of the recent development. After, after 1992, a number of border region cities and the capital cities of all inland provinces were opened up. That means, you see, China, we have northern east, northeast China, we have northern China, west, wild, wild west, uh, Xinjiang, Tibet, Yunnan, Guizhou, and you border on India, Southeast Asia, and the northern Mongolia, and now we want all the people benefit from our reform and opening policy. So we, we, we designate some other regions, some reform measures to them. The year of 2001 witnessed a big turning point. Of course, you all know, we joined WTO. What is remarkable is that China has learned from the successful experience of peoples all over the world, including the great and smart creative Irish people. We adopted a lot of wonderful ideas and successful practices from Shandong Free Zone in Ireland in designing our special economic zone. So many uh, of, my, uh, of my senior uh, uh, leading people uh, in China's government, they told me actually they have that inspiration and ideas of to have this what we call special economic zones or special development zones and they modeled first on your innovation and creative thinking or leadership in Shandong area. So there are two places Chinese people remember it very fondly. One is here with Xiangnong, although you can, you can say any Xiangnong is whether how is its future and all, but the Chinese think of very fondly of Xiangnong. And another is what I was ambassador in Doha, it's small places, but it is in Doha, we get a stamp of China's membership of WTO. So a lot, a lot of people went to Doha, he said, Ambassador here, I must go to, uh, what is the, ho oh, uh, there's a hotel there. And in that hotel, Chinese uh, finally in 2001 joined as a member of WTO. 
So China think of this every step of the way to join the international community to go with this globalization with a very pleasant and uh, courageous uh, uh, mind and efforts. Up to now, China has attracted 1.7 trillion US dollars of foreign investment. And at the same time, China has made more than 1.2 trillion US dollars of direct investment in other countries and regions. While making strides towards its modern modernization goals, China has made tremendous contribution to the world's economic development too. So I, I, I here I give you uh, several examples, perhaps not them all, but uh, it will be interesting to know. Four decades of China's success raised the Chinese people's living standard by a dramatic margin. For example, China's GDP grew from 218.5 billion US dollars to 18.5 billion in 1978 to in 1926 last year, 11.2 trillion US dollars, an increase of more than 50 times in 38 years. China, <coughs> China's annual trade grew from 20.6 billion US dollars in the same year to 3.7 trillion US dollars, nearly 180 times. Our per capita gross national income grew from the same year about from $2,200 to nearly $8,000, up 40 times. So of course, you can see there's some difference there. We, we, we have to use some other, some, some other uh, of what we have received, the revenue, to further do our investment to improve our country's inf infrastructure <clears throat> and uh, some other social and uh, educational and uh, cultural development. China has also managed to provide food, clothing, and housing for more than 1.3 billion people, while lifting over 700 million people out of poverty. I don't know the exact number and the percentage. I think China in the Millennium Plan uh, of the United Nations, and according to World Bank, the, uh, the uh, poverty uh, lifting, China uh, achieved lion's share of all the achievements. I think it's most of the global people uh, lifting out of poverty, a lot of them are in China, uh, among these 700 million. <clears throat> now we have, uh, uh, last year, by this year's number, uh, we have uh, 30 million people left still in that poverty. Uh, we, our goal is by 2020, we uh, completely, uh, <coughs> completely uh, uh, solve this problem and uh, to get all those people above uh, the poverty line. <clears throat> it is uh, very hard it's because some people already, they cannot, they cannot even work. And uh, some, um, a lot of different conditions and, and their living condition cannot even uh, grow anything. So you have to think of a lot of special measures. <clears throat> we see there are great potential and bright future, future for China's economic development. Under the guidance and the leadership of President Xi Jinping, China is to be continually staying focused on the top priority of development and deeply implementing its 13th five-year plan, economic and social development plan from 2016 to 2020. If you now talk to Chinese people and uh, what they actually do economically or in terms of economic, social development, we do under the guidance of this plan. I want to emphasize this. This plan is not what uh, in the uh, uh, traditional uh, academic uh, economics uh, textbook to say it is like a planning economy, the demanding economy from the uh, old uh, 
what kind of ever kind of socialist or Soviet model. Uh, this plan, it is all for reference of the local governors and uh, government. It is not demand them to do it. They just give a list or a list of index and a list of goals to say this is the general goal of, of the nation. And you can have whatever measure you, you do to fit in your plan with these goals in reference. So it is not what we call in the planning economy or demanding economy to say it is com compulsive or it is a must that you must follow this plan exactly line by line, figure by figure. So we gave a lot of allowance and uh, uh, you can adapt your real actual situation in the province, in the sectors, and to see we work together to work for a general and uh, <coughs> targeted goals. And I want to, another thing I want to say is uh, uh, in this plan, we, uh, the central government put forward what we say five new concepts. Innovation, coordination, greenness, openness, and sharing. Some of them are, uh, have been always there, like openness and coordination. But the, what is emphasized is, is particularly emphasized personally, as, uh, as I understand, is innovation, greenness, and sharing. Sharing have a fairer, fairer and just society. Uh, people let people share the benefits and the results and the wealth of the achievements of our reform and opening up. Greenness and in innovation, that's in the early those 30, 40 years, we get a vast scale and a lot of investment, a lot of export and pull and push of the economy uh, up so much. But we cannot just continue this way. We realize that the global economy and the national economy is a balanced one. China now, we want more emphasis on the big economy, more friendlier, environmental friendlier, greener, and uh, <coughs> balanced with the global market. We now, we, 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 we put a lot of new efforts to boost the China's domestic market, to let people uh, consume and uh, to build their education, uh, uh, hospitality, hosp hospitals, national uh, secure uh, the, the health better. So in future, this is indeed a time of opportunity for other countries to look at this change of what we call the transformation of China's society and uh, change of China's restructure of the way and approach we do our economic development. So now our uh, growth rate indeed is coming down a bit. We purposely, we don't want to that have, just continue to have that quantitative investment and input and to let's see how many factories we have built, how many new, new things are there. And we put more emphasis on the quality of the growth. We have projected China's GDP growth this year as 6.5%. Still pretty high, and, but it's compared with double digit, digit and 9, 10, 11 growth rate, it is uh, dramatically coming down a bit. The first quarter recorded a 6.9% expansion. Of course, on the basis of the 11, now the 11 trillion dollars economic scale, this 6.5% growth, if realized, is still a very impressive scale. Looking into the future, we also have our what we call two centenary goals. Two 100 years goals. The, this is, uh, well, on the one hand, it's symbolic, but uh, on the other hand, it is a combination and it is another, another uh, say, maybe a breaking point to see the improvement of China's economy. One goal is by 2021, 20, when by 2021, uh, we celebrate the 100th uh, anniversary of the CCP uh, foundation, fun, uh, funding. China's GDP and per capita income 
will be doubled on the basis of 2010. I think 2010 is, this, this, this goal is not very high. Maybe we can, uh, we can realize it next year. <laughs> the second goal sets for 2049. That is by the year of the, uh, uh, by the year, 100 years celebration of China's, uh, our People's Republic China, Republic of China was established. That is 1949. So from 1949 to 2049 is another 100 years uh, benchmark. We'll get what we call uh, a strong, democratic, civilized, harmonious, modern, socialist country will be completed. <laughs> uh, people say this is actually what uh, uh, our Deng Xiaoping, uh, uh, the paramount leader, or the, what we call the architect of China's uh, reform and opening up. He said uh, the, the, he used all the Chinese way to express his goal. And uh, the goal, what we know now, is to build China. We have already there uh, to have uh, what we call uh, what, uh, better off society, Xiao Kang. Uh, a better off society is the society what you see in China now. So he would say another, in his time, he said another 70, 50, or 100 years, we may get China as an uh, even better society. Uh, uh, this is some of the benchmark he set up. Uh, some econom economists said that would be what we call middle level uh, development, develop, developed country level. We are still far from you. You are, you are the top level of developed country. You are more than per capita income, more than all the other European countries like German, France, uh, Italy, uh, UK, they are all, uh, per capita income, they are all under about 40,000. Yours is 60,000. So hopefully, by then, we would have 10 to 20,000. That would be, if, if it is 20,000, it would be double what we have, uh, more than double what we have in China in the GDP, the total. Uh, way ahead, of course, in total in any other countries. So China, we have really the different situation. We have so many people there. We have to feed them. It's 1.3 billion. While you look at the whole scale, China is uh, uh, number two, or number one, number three. You look at the per capita income, or per capita GDP, we feel we still have a long way to go. While you increase the people's, you improve people's life, you have to, you need to take care of the society, you take care of the nature, you care of the, take care of the seasons and water. This is, it is very demanding and uh, uh, a lot of challenge. For that, we, we need to really uh, learn, continue by the opening up and reform, continue to learn from our partners and the friends uh, uh, in the world, particularly from Ireland. Uh, a few words about uh, our China-Ireland relations. This is really very encouraging, and uh, I like to say very encouraging, very strong relations, and also very encouraging, very promising, with great potential, with more and more friends and, 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 and the people supporting and assist the development growth of the relations. I think, you see, uh, it is always under the uh, care and, and, and the guidance of the top leaders of both countries. Uh, 2012, our uh, now the president, then the vice president, uh, Xi Jinping visit here, and 2014, you were president there. And in between, you have your prime minister in China, our prime minister, 2015, uh, uh, visit this country. I went to the farm. Uh, uh, he went uh, this weekend. I, I said, I finally I can come because we signed MOU, uh, uh, our Minister of uh, uh, AQSIQ uh, with the, your Minister of Agriculture, the MOU for importing uh, Irish uh, beef and horse and some other uh, uh, food feed and, and a lot of a long list. Um, 
So now I want to personally share this good news to, oh, that is really a big family. Parents, grandparents, uncles, nanny, and four or five children, and two dogs. We all together uh, celebrate uh, the, the good time uh, of, the, uh, of, of the relations. And uh, uh, I also see, he said, this is, this is all the uh, cows, are all calves, were all calves when your prime minister two years ago uh, came here. Now they all began to produce milk. Uh, very, very impressive. And I talk with the people there. Uh, uh, there are different parties, from Fine Gael and from Fine Gael and from the local councillors. They are all in, in, in one, in unison. Uh, not at the same time, but they are all agree. They all, um, uh, we, have, we share the common ground that everybody wants to promote these relations. Everybody uh, wants to see the further development. And they, they, they keep giving me the proposals, suggestions, and some of them actually have been to China many times. And uh, it's, it's indeed very encouraging. And also, uh, I, I, I went to some other places in Mayo and Clare, uh, Tipuri, Cork, uh, everywhere. Uh, some, 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 big, uh, some big and very impressive projects are under active consideration, uh, like uh, uh, some, some companies in China are already considering the joint uh, hands with uh, your government uh, here and companies to try to design and build the hydro uh, electricity uh, uh, plant integrated with what you are best at, this windmill power generation. So we are going to build a big battery for the extra uh, windmill power uh, to uh, integrate it with, with the um, grill here. So all these examples uh, we didn't expect to have uh, two years, three years uh, before. And we have some other all levels, uh, different areas, uh, uh, exchanges and cooperation. Uh, from education level, we have the almost like a big, biggest Confucius Institute here. And the encouraging news is uh, the uh, Department of Education, uh, in your five-year plan, I hope it is not a de demanding compulsive plan, it's a reference plan, in 10 years to say, to put Chinese onto the, into, onto the uh, living sir itinerary. Uh, many many uh, uh, parents and mothers say they hope in two years uh, or three years uh, to see Chinese language teaching uh, already in, uh, for, for our uh, learning uh, lovely young boys and, and girls. Uh, there are some, uh, some other examples like uh, in the uh, cultural level, in the investment level, uh, China's uh, Last weekend, we have the chairman and the uh, exec team of the Hainan airliner. They are really, really active, and they are keen on continuing their presence here. Um, I asked him how they have seen this land and how they, they have done the investment. They have actually, by numbers, after I came here, they have, they, they have put fresh, extra, 10 billion US dollars into Avalon and through Avalon acquired CIT and become the number one, and the globally number three uh, aircraft and financial leasing group uh, in the world. Actually, this is the best example of the combination of China and uh, Ireland because all the, all, almost most of the employees are Irish. And even the top uh, CEO, uh, a lady or slatty, Mr. Slatty, yeah, top CEO and a lot of expertise are from Ireland. Uh, they are very, they are very uh, hopeful and uh, very confident 
that here they will expand their business uh, here. So with that, I want to stop here. Uh, I can put at least uh, uh, longer, and, but uh, uh, indeed, uh, we depend on all of you, and we together, we work and for this uh, uh, better and very prosperous. I want to add one thing uh, before we, I, I receive any questions. Uh, that is, uh, we also enjoyed more and more uh, mutual trust and uh, the, uh, the, the coordination and the mutual support, um, understanding in our even foreign policies. Uh, bilaterally, we always have the very good support from your Department of Foreign Trade, and we discuss our discuss our, the areas we are discussing is expand is expanding are expanding, and we we compare notes. Uh, we exchange our deep, deeper thoughts, and we see uh, more and more common grounds. Also, see how to maintain better the peace and the stability of the world. Really, and also maintain and uh, and, and keep the momentum of our relations with Europe. We like to see the continuous, continuous development of of, of the European uh, integration. We want to see the. Uh, good growth of European Union. <clears throat> with that, of course, we, we, we believe our relation with Ireland will benefit. And we also want to see the stable, prosperous, uh, and the strong uh, Europe in the world stage. Thank you very much.